1st and 2nd Samuel. Basically, these are one cohesive story. Like Joshua, Judges, and Ruth, they are among the books of history, and chronicle a portion of the history of Israel. Specifically, they talk about the last judge, Samuel, and the first two kings, Saul and David. They may have been started by Samuel, but he dies less than halfway through the text of the two books, so someone else has to have written the rest. And, well, we just don't know who that could be. The books of Samuel are about David. I know I said they were about Samuel, Saul, and David, but really they're about David, the second king of Israel, and arguably the first good king. David was Ruth's great-grandson, and was also related in the long run to Jesus. In 1st and 2nd Samuel, God establishes that family line. So, what's in the books of Samuel? Well, the first eight chapters of 1 Samuel are about, well, Samuel as a judge of Israel. 9 to 15 give us Israel's first king, Saul. From 16 to 31, David is chosen as the next king, but King Saul tries to hunt him down to kill him. That concludes 1 Samuel. 2 Samuel begins with David hearing of Saul's death and becoming king of Judah, not Israel quite yet. He does from chapters 5 to 21, uniting Judah and Israel into a single kingdom. The last three chapters are about his accomplishments and his final days. There are a lot of important things that happen throughout that time, so I'm just going to sort of throw them out at you for now. 1 Samuel 3, Samuel is called as a judge. Chapter 10, Saul is crowned king. Chapter 15, Saul doesn't listen to God and gets rejected as king. Next chapter, Samuel chooses David to be next at God's instruction. The very next chapter, David takes on Goliath in battle and wins, despite Goliath being a giant. Chapter 31, Saul and his son Jonathan die in battle. 2 Samuel. Chapter 2, David becomes king of Judah. Chapter 5, he becomes king of all Israel. Chapter 7, God promises David he will have an eternal house, promising the eventual coming of Jesus. In 11 and 12, David makes a very bad mistake, repents, says sorry for it, and his son Solomon is born. The next several chapters are about his son Absalom's rebellion, and in chapter 22, he gives his final psalm of praise. The books of Samuel are a story, a historical story that is true, but they aren't centered around a broad theme the same way that some of the other books are. Instead, they focus on the life of a single man and the lives of others that led up to and enabled his life, the life of David, the king of Israel, who would eventually have from his line of descendants a savior, Jesus.